my name is Stephen Gill. I um, run a little uh, record label called Butterfly Effect. We've been going for about four years. Um, we release vinyl records by Northeast bands. Um, we've done about 15 albums and we started a project, or I started a project about a year ago, where every month we do a, a lathe seven inch cover by different bands. And the idea is it's like a artifact. So as well as music in a, in a lathe, you know, handmade record, it's also got a um, the, the cover itself, it's handmade, it's made by love. And the whole idea is that people come along, buy one, you get the first um, option to buy the next one. And it's been really successful and really kind of really, really cheap. And 2020 has been a rubbish year. And this has been a really kind of cool project to work on. And the most important thing is most of the money that we make goes back to the artist. So we, we've managed to kind of like give money back to the arts. And for me, that's the most important thing. And even more important in 2020, where people can't perform, can't get paid for, for doing what they, they love doing and what they, they, um, they strive at doing. And this gives them a little bit of money and hopefully a little bit of um, love back as well. So, you know, we've had from local bands, we've had Steve from um, The Mouses has been on it, The Noise and that Naive. Um, but we've had loads of bands and it's been really fun. And, and for next year, we've got lots of things lined up as well. So it's all good. Terrific. So how does that work? Do you do some kind of Patreon or is it just like you bring a record out and then if people buy it, they buy it? Yeah, so so what's so when bands so, so it's changed a lot, I guess, and you know, when we started. So we, we sounded out in Stockton and um there's a couple of shops um as well. Um the re the record shed in, in Darlington and Durham are very helpful as well. So we have physical ways in HMV in Darlington. There's physical ways you can buy the records. Um, but Bandcamp's been really, really kind of fantastic for us. And, and, and also Facebook and social media. So we built up about 15, 1600 kind of likes beginning of this year. And, um, and then what we decided to do was create a little club. So uh, when we started the singles club, uh, there's a private Facebook page and people kind of just get invited to it. And um, pretty much the same people buy the same the records. So um, they just love what we're doing and, and it's a really nice community. Um, and then that's just a case of if you want a copy, yes, yeah, send me some money and I'll post it to them or deliver it to them if they live nearby. Um, the bands get a kick out of it as well because it, it gives them total freedom to do what they want, um, both both musically as well as artistically. Um, it's 40 copies, but they're 20 pounds each. Um, so they're not, they're not cheap, but you're getting something with, with, with this, which is really quite unique and rare. And hopefully at some stage, you know, that, that they'll be worth a few quid as well. So the people buying them, you know, as well as getting something that can hang, in, literally can hang in the walls. We've had Polaroids, we've had Lido prints, we've had original drawings, we've had all sorts of things. But you can also listen to it as well, and you know, you're supporting the, the local, the local music scene. And to me, the you know having that local music scene is incredibly important. Um, I I grew up in in Glasgow, and and um, oh, oh, Scotland, but spent a lot of time in Glasgow. Maybe a better way of putting it, and and really got into that. That, that kind of scene that was happening then, you know, with Mogwai, Arab Straff, Bell and Sebastian, um, and some of my mates used to hang out in nice and sleazy. And there's a really nice community. And I guess that's what with Butterfly Effect I'm just trying to do, recreate that idea of community. Um, so there's a band called Seeding Demons, um, released their album a couple of years ago, Nil, releasing the next album next year. That's, that's going to be amazing. Um, and Nell and Litt, who took Neil Gaiman's Sandman and made that into a folk rock opera type thing which is fantastic as well and they've actually covered each of the songs which is just amazing that, that you know one's remixed one and one's covered the other and just that idea that that people connect and you create a kind of a, a community that maybe wouldn't exist if it hadn't been for butterfly effect just gives me a huge huge joy actually tell yeah. joy. It's also released a christmas album called joy as well but anyway Christmas album, that's what, Christmas full of joy, that's what we need. Yeah, really interested in what you're saying there. I was reading an article um, last night about um, what the things that we've lost um, in not being able to go out and just like hang out and hang out in places where other creative people hang out and um, and just, you know, just um, the energy that it uh, produces just to be amongst other creative people, even if you're not talking about creativity and those chance meetings, those chance happening, that kind of synchronicity that can just give us a nudge in the right direction. And um, I totally agree with that. I think that there's um, um, really something to be said when you've got uh, creative people hanging out together 
and um, and just what can happen by putting them all together on a regular basis. And it's it's really sad that we've lost that. Um, but great that you've you've got other projects going on. So how long how long has the label been going? Um, first, so I'll, I'll I'll tell you the story of the label. Um, a guy called Dave Saunders. Most people know Dave. Um, we were at Twisterella about four years ago, uh, watching Mouses play two amazing sets, play a lunchtime set, and then someone cancelled and they played about a 5 p.m. set. Um, and in between, me and Dave had got quite a few more drinks in us between those two two sets, and we were just looking, watching the Mouses and saying, "These are brilliant. You know, why hasn't someone signed them?" And 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 then we just decided that there and then that we're going to create a record label. So after my hangover went away the next day, I texted Dave and said, Dave, I wasn't joking, you know, let's do it. He went, yeah, let's do it. Anyway, sadly, we missed out on the mouses. They'd already signed up to another label, but released the, um, the first one was Black Sheep, Frederick Dickens. And that was about, um, about three and a half, four years ago that we did that. And, and Black Sheep, Frederick Dickens was um, Dave as the, as the main singer and um, Rob Irish doing all the music and just, you know, downright genius guy. Um, and both of them together were made this dark wave beautiful music that was talking about Charles Dickens' brother, Frederick Dickens, and about the fact he was buried in Darlington, very close to where I live, actually. Um, and it's just the sadness of life and, and, and masculinity and, and some of the, the issues that, that happened hundreds of years ago still happening now. And there's a way to try and kind of talk about that and relationships and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then from there, it's just been, you know, one, one record after another. So, you know, we've tried to keep it local. Um, we did a compilation where we had, you know, Avalanche Party and Twist Helix and lots of other great bands. We um, also had Weekend Sun, um, Darlington-esque band that that um, released as well. And that was quite cool. We had the um, one of the creators of Viz do the cover. He knew the band, likes the band a lot, offered to do it. And um, that was kind of fun. Um, Nell and Lett this year, Seeding Demons, James Leonard Hewitson. Um, we did a thing called Noisy Daughters with tracks. So Rianne from um, from um, the BBC um, Teesside and uh, um, Tracks, they did a thing called Noisy Daughters, which is really to try and encourage um, more female in music, never mind just, you know, a front singer or anything else, but just everything about it, really. Um, and that was really successful. Um, a lovely pink vinyl. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's we've, we've released about 14, 15 albums. And, in, and this year, because it's been such a weird year, so we did the Nell and Lit and James Leonard, Hewitson's to start with but then everything stopped so beginning of March everything stopped and so I, I asked a lot of bands that are on the label to um, just write a song in lockdown and in just last month we released what's called the Cronus Sessions um, and it's good it's it's clear vinyl it's got etched in the middle of it to our friends in the, in the, in the in bladder book um, fat flies they etched the coronavirus in it and then we did the, all the songs so we had um, all the bands that have been part of, you know, all, a lot of the bands have been part of um, Butterfly Effect. So we had One Sided Horse, which is a guy called Mark, with Embrace as his backing band. Um, uh, we had Veil, which is Graham, doing some kind of his wild, viola kind of music. Um, Graham Wilkinson. Uh, we had just loads of bands, and it was just really nice and really kind of um, exciting to do. But, but again, trying to kind of get the art aspect of it. As a local artist, and she works in um, um, lino, lino prints, but she carved out a whole cover and then printed the piece on that cover. And each one's got a handmade cover that's kind of signed by her as well. And the Ceiling Demons also, um, they have a guy called Art Demon who does all their art. So when they, if you ever go and see them live, often you'll see Art Demon um, on a big canvas and just as the music's hitting him, you'll just, just paint on the canvas and how he feels. And he did a little print as well. And um, his prints about the creative rising. So, you know, the fact that more and more link together and more and more kind of connections are made, the creative force will rise and rise. So, so that you get a little print with that as well. So it's 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 about doing those kind of things that are kind of like cool, funky, and 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 even though at a time where people can't, you know, go in a recording studio necessarily kind of do what you'd normally do, it's still this idea of having an output, a creativity, trying to think about something in a different way, and still doing something that kind of makes people smile because God, we know 2020 has been a bit of crap. So making something that makes you smile is just, you know, what it's all about, I think. So yeah, so yeah. yeah so that's been three or four years. <laughs> no, that's a brilliant answer. I love that idea of, um, 
you know, vinyl's really coming back now. And um, what I always loved about it in the past is that it was, it was, you know, it was like an art piece. It wasn't just about the music that was contained in it. It was about the cover artwork. And for me, definitely, it was about the vinyl etchings. They're always like uh, the Easter eggs of, uh, yeah, of yeah. Uh, vinyl. Um, so it's brilliant that you're embracing all of that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the live stuff that you've done in the past and obviously the way that lockdown's affected that this year? So the record label doesn't, doesn't necessarily promote live music, so we're not really a promoter in that sense. We try and kind of get involved um, and, and try and work, because basically it's me. It, this is, um, it, it, you know, there's a, there's a few supporting, so tracks work very closely with tracks. That's, that's great. But really, it's just me. This is my part-time job. So doing the, the records is actually a huge amount of work anyway. Um, the post office pretty much hates me. Um, but so, so doing live gigs, it, it's more like a, you know, one, a couple of times a year. So again, try and build up relationships with, with venues. So there's um, in Darlington, there's a, a place called, um, called Voodoo where they have a brilliant upstairs and they usually let us for free, but then we fill it for them. So you know, I guess it's a win-win, but they are lovely people, really supportive. And we did the Noisy Daughters launch there. Um, but then we, whenever we do a, a launch, we normally do, you know, four or five gigs. Sometimes a band help organize it. Some, well, most of the time the band organize it. A couple of times I'll kind of work through as well. You know, we know people in the George and we know people, you know, elsewhere. Um, so, so really the, the, the live events, aren't something I really get so much. I find them really stressful, <laughs> really stressful. Will people turn up? Will the bands turn up? Um, but I love them. Um, I mean, my whole, my, you know, basis of, 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 of kind of, you know, since about 16, my first band was Iron Maiden playing in, the, in Glasgow Apollo. And um, since that point, I've been hooked, addicted probably. And I go and see probably, I don't know, a couple of hundred bands a year. Um, and, you know, I'm always there for the support normally as well, knowing my friends saying, come on, it might be quite good. It might be this, it might be that. And, and, and I miss that. And I, and I think what 2020 is driven is, is this, like you said, you can meet someone, you know, if, 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 as a kid, if you, if you wore, I'm going back when I was 16, if you wore an Iron Maiden t-shirt and you walk down the street and you saw someone else with an Iron Maiden t-shirt, you immediately had a connection with them. And it's the same with gigs. You can go along a gig and if you go and see the idols, you know, say, play, you know that a person is probably going to like that kind of loud shouty music with a bit of a social conscious to it and you can chat and talk and it's a bit of a community a bit of a gang and i think that's that's what i missed this year that that ability to get hot sweaty jump around a bit and just meet random people and having that 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 experience you don't expect that that, that randomness you get from being open to a conversation and open to a kind of experience and um, that's what i miss and from the band's perspectives you know most people become musicians, I think, because they actually want to, they want to perform or entertain or express themselves or whatever it is. And taking that away, I think it's incredibly challenging for bands uh, because it is how they, they, they think and operate. So, you know, we have to give them other ways to kind of be able to communicate and be able to kind of get that creative energy out of them. Um, so that's why I think the record label comes into it a little bit. I don't know if that answered your question, but... Brilliant. I, I think you've answered all of my questions. Um, it's, it's, it's been really good to talk to you. It's like, you know, it's um, made me realise that, that I need to pay a bit more attention to Darlington because there's stuff going on there that I didn't really know about. And um, I'm very grateful, grateful to Fran for, for these introductions. Um, Stephen, I think we'll leave it there for now, but um, let's do keep in touch and... Um, pick up and see the ways we can collaborate and of course you're invited to the great big party of the auxiliary when all this is done well it'd be lovely to I, I didn't even know about the auxiliary until about um you know 20 minutes ago so you know that that's brilliant to find out that this exists because you know everyone knows about the baltic everyone knows about the middlesbrough arts kind of you know some some of the, the old gallery, gallery there and, and it's like you know it sounds quite a dang space i'm quite excited to kind of go along and, have really, a beer really. and see some music maybe as well yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll get that system pounding. Um, look forward to it. And uh, beers are on me when I see you. Take care. Brilliant.